In this video, whoops, wrong screen. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the new improved articles notes feature in Joomla 3.9 and how you can use that for managing and maintaining your site. Hey there, Joomla fans, Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. And thanks for tuning in to today's Maintenance Monday live stream, episode number 64. Um, always new topics to talk about, but with Joomla 3.9 coming out, there's a bunch of things that we can add, and we'll be doing so in a couple of weeks, in the next couple of weeks, to talk about how to maintain our sites in Joomla. So without further ado, let's head on over to that first window that we had there. No, not that one. That one there. Uh, and uh, stick around because we're going to show a couple of cool features too, besides talking about this new... Um, this new articles uh, article notes feature and then we'll talk about our maintenance Monday live stream not our watch me work live stream tomorrow and what we'll be doing so here we are in the basic joomla.com website hey Rick uh, and uh, just a reminder to head on over there go to uh, giveaways enter into some of the uh, into the monthly giveaway some great joomla prizes there that you can read about on the page look at that nobody's entered there's still 25 days left so head on over and do that. So for today, to look at article notes, we're gonna go into one of my sites. It's my largest Joomla site. As you can see, the ID number for articles is up to 19,000. I think after uh, some failed imports years ago, I think we're probably running around 16,000 articles on this. What I want to show you is, is that, uh, uh, and talk about, is that article notes used to disappear as you change versions of your articles. And we'll talk about versions in another uh, episode but in your articles now after 3.9 as we go into here you have down here this field note and in that note you can add uh, all sorts of references to what you want to do you might uh, for instance if this was an article that was uh, supposed to come off the page uh, uh, and, and be changed up in uh, December, you could then uh, go in and add a note to a change in December. You can leave that for yourself. You can do all sorts of things. Whatever note you want to leave with this article is something that you can add. Now, uh, you can just leave that note. Now, something really cool is that these notes are now searchable as well. So you could leave notes for other people who are working on the website for you. So let's say, if I put in A D M I N T D for Tim Davis, jam together something unique like that. I could leave a note for Tim Davis admin. Of course, that's myself, but we could pick someone else and just say, um, uh, please recheck, please recheck the um, copyright on this image. Suppose you had someone adding pages and you saw it and it's like, oh, I don't know if that's really right. Uh, so you would tell them to go ahead and check the copyright on the image. So what you could then do next is this. We'll save and close that article. You'll see that in the list that comes up here, okay, is uh, in the note right here, you'll see it says note admin TD, please recheck the copyright on this image. Now that's great because it's at the top of the list there, but what if it's on a page that's way down in the middle of the thousands of pages that are on here? Here's the really cool thing. You can go into the search field in the article manager and just search for uh, something. It'll not only search your title, but it will also search your notes. Uh, hey, Mr. James uh, Town, we'll talk about that in a second. I see your question there. Um, so if we search for admin TD, and that's why I kept them jammed together, because let's say you search for admin space TD, I think that that would probably work too, but I like to create something really unique, because now when I search, it's going to search all those thousands of pages, and here you will see it finds two articles. The one that we just added that note to, and the other one that I added admin TD to in my uh, in my preparations and tests for this uh, for this live stream today. And so basically, if you have someone working on your site, they could go in and say, well, let's see, are there any notes for me? Let's say their initials were SD. That's my wife's initials. We could search for admin SD. And that person would say, oh, no, there's nothing for me to do. Um, but if it was someone else that had a note, switch it back to TD, they'd say, 
oh, there's two things here for me to do. What should I do? Well, I'll open up this article here. And what does he want me to do? And we'll go scroll down, look. Please recheck the copyright on this image. Oh, okay, that's a task for me to do. So it's a cool way to build in some kind of task management for teams that are working on your Joomla site. So uh, notes, that's uh, just a couple of examples of how I can think to use them. What are your ideas of how to use notes, especially now that the notes do not disappear with different versions of the article if you have versions turned on? It's always there with whatever version of the article you have active. So what are your ideas? How are you going to use this? How do you use this? Uh, let's chat about that in just a second. Or if you're watching the Encore performance, if you're watching the, the rerun of this on YouTube, leave it in the comments below. And uh, your, uh, your ideas and how you're using notes will be um, helpful to others, I'm sure. And together as a community, we're gonna grow in managing our sites. So that is pretty much what I wanted to talk about today for our topic. I'm going to get on to answer. Uh oh, my picture is over the notes field. Oh, womp womp. Womp 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 womp. Okay, everybody, let's just head on back for quick reference. And I have to somehow turn off my camera in this view, which is going to be this one here. Hey, everybody, there's where the note field is right there. Thanks for pointing that out, Rick. That's um, only slightly embarrassing. Anyways, for those of you that were watching, there's where the notes field is. And there is where those examples were that I was showing right there. Admin TD. Please recheck the copyright on this image. Appreciate you pointing that out, Rick. All right. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and this is helpful, you find these tutorials and these live streams helpful. I've earned a subscription. If I've earned a subscription, please do subscribe and ring that bell for notification. So you'll get updates of new live streams and new events and new tutorials when they're added to the channel. So I'm going to grab the link to our Zoom call so people can call in as well. Uh, actually, this you can also phone in on this. If uh, I don't know, I, nobody's ever phoned in. I don't know what happens with the long distance charges, but we'll end up. We'll talk about this and some other things. But for those of you that are leaving right now, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support of this channel. Enjoy your Juma sites and God bless. Okay, let me get the Zoom link here. I have it ready and going here and i see your discussion that's happening in there all right where is my chat to paste that here we go if you want to call in there's the link to the zoom call and i'm going to pop out this chat so i can see it easier uh, yeah, so Mr. James Town, uh, James Z Town, um, I like Joomla articles over K2 uh, because I like things in the core. So as new uh, as new features come along, and there's a ding dong, someone coming in to the Zoom call, and it is going probably to be Vinny. Hey, Vinny. Hello. I almost hear you. I don't know if you said anything. Uh, anyway, so I like the I like the core stuff because if updates come up uh, and you want to switch back to the core, you've got to move all your stuff out of K2 or other things. As John just said there, the new fields and articles, he also, without those, he prefers the Joomla core. And Mary's got that question there too, is K2 ready for Joomla 4? Um, and she says, I've heard they are not working on it. Well, that would be interesting. To have confirmed and Vinny he likes the uh, Joomla articles as well so I think uh, you know a lot of these a lot of these CCKs uh, like like uh, K2 and others they were adding functionality that wasn't in the core Joomla uh, years ago and now as Joomla continues to mature and evolve and be developed there's more and more things that it's more and more powerful and things that can be done right in it and so kind of like to stick with those core things as much as possible. Uh, do I have my sound on? That's why I can't hear Vinny. Probably. Oh my goodness. 
You know, I got up, I woke up fairly early for me this morning and thought, oh, I've got plenty of time to get ready. And then I had a client call to register some domains and he wants a, uh, which is great, happy for the business. And he's, he wants to start a new business with someone, wants a website for it. So that's all great. But then I ended up rushing around. So, uh, uh, Mr. Jamesy Town, can you have other people post articles from the front end in Joomla? Yes. And uh, want, you want to start a blog and have contributors new to blogging. Yeah, and, and Mr. Jamesy Town, that was one of the things that was very, very difficult with older versions of Joomla, uh, uh, giving people permission and access to post blogs that would go only to certain areas. And that has been remedied. Well, with the control of the access, uh, the access levels and, and being able to create your own access levels, you can do a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And that's one thing that makes Joomla, you know, if you if you if you sit there and compare Joomla with WordPress, that is one thing that Joomla really has over WordPress is WordPress you're stuck with, you know, your your certain um, groups where they have access, but with with Joomla, not only can you create your own groups and create your own access levels, but a lot of the extensions allow you to adjust what can be done on that uh, that extension based on the person's uh, access level. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's good. So for an example would be an extension. People are allowed to create articles, but they're not allowed to delete them. Yeah. So that's that's a good one. Um, we'll keep talking about this just while I'm thinking of it. Tomorrow's Maintenance Monday live stream on Twitch. No, I keep saying that wrong. Tomorrow's Watching Work live stream on Twitch, basic uh, uh, twitch.tv forward slash basic Joomla. Chuck asked if we uh, would do something to show how Regular Labs content templater works. So I thought tomorrow we just have a little collab. We'll bring up a templater, talk about how it works, and then it's a chance for everybody to share either on the uh, by voice or in the in the chat, some of your uh, tips and favorite things to do with content templater, and uh, I thought that would be a good a good thing just to collab and we'll hang out and do that. So that'll be tomorrow at um, I think eighteen hundred UTC. Here's a question that I have: Does Europe change to daylight savings time? John, can you tell me that? Because I've been announcing 11 o'clock my time, left coast of Canada time, and then uh, that's 1800 UTC. But if uh, we just changed our clocks back an hour on the weekend. Okay, John said you did. Okay, great. Now, I'm, uh, you know, in this discussion about uh, changing the clocks, there's a lot, you know, every year they say, well, let's just stop changing them. I'm all for that, except for this one point. Yesterday was my birthday and it was 25 hours long. So for that one reason, that's my one caveat about not wanting to change the time just because I get an extra hour on my birthday. Jesus, your birthday is November 4th? It is. Well, happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. Now, you were at a birthday celebration yesterday. My best friend's birthday is on November 4th and mine's on November 1st. Yeah, I saw that on November 3rd. And Mary sent me a very, lo a very lovely animated GIF, or GIF, however you want to say it, of a goat trying to eat a uh, birthday cake. So, <laughs> thanks, Rick. Yes, I turned 53 yesterday. And I was thinking, oh, that's 53. That's my, you know, I've lived a year for every card in the deck. And now 53 is my joker year. And so either I was going to uh, you know, take things less seriously or else finally defeat Batman. But then it dawned on me that last year was my 53rd year, so I've, I've, I've blown it. You were born in 65. I was born in 65. It's also my friend's birth year. Oh, really? So we were born in the same day? Same day, same year. Well, cool. Different parts of the country, uh, the continent. Uh, Rick said 35. No, 53, the other way around. You know, I, I find that I don't really as I get older that I don't care it's just a number it really isn't you know maybe it's different for men and women but I could care less about getting older <laughs> um, you don't care if you get older 
mean, the number is not a big deal. I don't need to, like, say, I'm Yeah. That was an incoming call on my phone there. Push bullet. I wonder who that is. I'll give him a call after. Anyways, yeah, so it was my birthday. That's cool that he was born on the same day. That is a small world. So uh, John says here in the here the EU has proposed to, st to stop using daylight saving time. They work on removing it next year, so probably five to ten years. Well, if Europe does that, uh, maybe North America will follow suit as well. Uh, there is uh, here's a trivia question for those of you who know lots about Canada. There's one province in Canada that does not change its time. I know it's not yours. It's not mine. What one do you think it is? I'm not even sure how many provinces you have. <laughs> there are 10. 10 and now three territories. When I was in grade school, it was uh, two territories, but now there are three territories. Oh, hold on. I just went to clear my phone and accidentally called that person. <laughs> um, uh, John says number eight. Okay, now I, hold on for... No, who knows? Okay. Um, John, uh, Mr. Jamesy Town says, I entered the giveaway every way I could and was just wondering, how do you announce the winner? So, uh, 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 Mr. Jamesy Town, when uh, I pick a winner, I uh, email them and I also mention it on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, because gonna... what you do is you receive an email that's got links to claim the different prizes. There's different ways. So, yes, fingers crossed it's you. Keep entering till you win. My big problem with that giveaway is you gave you, you started giving the book out right after I won. Oh, okay. Well, you're gonna win soon. And I can't win until March again. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, March, June four might be out, right? So. By that time, that book is not gonna be any good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the province that does not change its time is Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan is a prairie, uh, is mostly prairie. I mean, they have hills and stuff like that, but I mean, it's mostly uh, mostly a prairie province. Uh, lots of farming, and they just don't change their clocks. And the rest of us, there's a joke that goes around says, "Why don't they change the? Why don't they turn the clocks back in Saskatchewan?" And the answer is because nobody wants to spend an extra hour in Saskatchewan. <laughs> Saskatchewan, one we can't spell. Sus uh, yeah, S A S K A T C H E W A N. I'm an American. We can't spell it. So if you're looking at North America, that's the continent that the U.S. is on, by the way, Vinny. Um, <laughs> if you look at North America, you got British Columbia. That's the province I'm in on the left coast. Alberta, and then Saskatchewan. And in school, if you ever wanted to do a project on and I, I i don't know if you guys ever did anything like this but um uh, but you know you'd have we you'd have a project that you had to do something on in school and um then you had to and always you're going to have to put the map on the cover and so basically i'll show you here although it seems to be some uh some uh, hesitation in the camera right there and my remote has gone here so i'm going to have to do this manually here uh full screen do, do, do. here we go this is saskatchewan this one right here and as you can see i'm still making still hiding it behind my picture uh no that's anyways as you can see it is of mostly a square shape there's a few little bumps just in the border here but if you wanted an easy map to draw for a project you would pick saskatchewan because it was just mostly a rectangle except for some squiggly stuff up here All right. So, uh, other uses for notes that I might not have covered or, or dreamt up. 
for article notes. How do you guys use them? Or do you use them? Nobody? Nobody uses them? Do you use them much, Vinny? Mostly for sorting, okay. Are you even still there, Vinny? I am now. Oh, okay. We had a problem over the weekend where our um, our uh, our furnace died. Oh, bummer. Yeah, so we had it fixed today, and and uh, so. So you're still you're still cold. No, no, not now. I started coughing right before I came on. <laughs> okay. So what was the question? Uh, uh, how, how, are, how are we using or not using article notes? Mary says it's sort of a new thing. She hasn't gotten used to using them yet. I don't, I don't use them very much. I mean, considering I don't have to, I don't work with anybody else usually. I don't necessarily set them up. But I may do it to remind myself for things later. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, the nice thing is that your notes would always be wherever you put, wherever you're working on your Joomla site, in which case, I mean, if you have them written on paper at home, if you're an analog person like I am, then uh, you wouldn't you would always have them. I'm trying to use OneNote and have my notes in there, but right now my OneDrive space is so full it's not syncing. So that's not working uh, perfectly for me. So I could see that some things that I wanted in there would be good. You know, another thing that I thought was, and this is sort of in keeping with versions, um, uh, because you know, even as I was talking, if I go back to this example um, right here, uh, even, you know, I talked about, well, this could be the Christmas version of this article and I would have a version note that I would put down here, Christmas version. Um, and then that would, that would be great. Once I save this, that will, that note Christmas version will go with the version, but then the admin note here, I might want to say, um, uh, you, you do have a Christmas version, um, Uh, and so I could save that for myself. So the next time I'm thinking like, oh, I need to change this particular article over now because it's not Christmas. I'll have to do a whole new article. Maybe I, oh, look, here I have a note. You do have a Christmas version. Now it would require the discipline of whenever you open an article, looking at the notes to say, is there something here I should remember? Um, but of course, as you get into more and more pages and different things, then um, that, that could be handy. Because when I save that, notice the version note disappeared. Now, the thing that I did realize is that with conditional content, you can make a Christmas version of this article and, a, and an Easter version and a summer version and put them all in one article and have it automatically change because um, uh, conditional content uh, from regular labs will allow you to do that. So that would be one level of automation that you don't need to do. But having said that, um, ooh, there, that sounded exciting. Having said that, a little note from my friend Rick. Having said that, oh, he's just gone live. Yes, okay. Hey, look at that. Basic Joomla tutorials changed my life. Easy to use and understand. Thanks, Yari. Cool, a comment that just got made onto the uh, site. Cool. Thank you very much. Man, everything's chiming in here. I wonder if that might be coming off my phone. Um, but, the, you know, for instance, another note you might put in here is um, if you emailed someone permission to use an, an article on your site and so you pasted it on there, you could even post uh, the information in there uh, saying, uh, Vinny gave me permission to use this. And then you could put the address Vinny at webhelpus.com and you could put the date 2018 and the month 11 and the date 05 and then you've got just a handy little note there. So that's another thing that you could do. 
and I'll know where it is when I break into a site. Yeah, exactly. But, of course, if someone says, you know, let's say someone complained, hey, that's copyrighted material. You don't have permission to use that. You could say, well, no, look, you know, Vinny gave me that uh, back in November the 5th, and he gave me the permission. Um, okay, I see something happening. In it. Oh, so uh, uh, Mr. Jamesy Town, when you log in the back end, you get a note saying PHP 7 is no longer being supported. Contact your host for upgrade instructions. Should you do this? Okay, and Vinny, you say, yes, always a good idea. Um, and that they ha most have a schedule. And Mr. Jamesy Town says, I use a web hosting company. Wouldn't they do that for you automatically? It may be av available, Mr. Jamesy Town. And so, but let me just show you, I actually have a tutorial on that, on the channel. Let's go looking for that. Um, so I can post that for you right here. Let's go to the old YouTubes here and the video manager. Now, depending on your host, some hosts actually give you multiple options. Yes. Um, of, of, of PHPs to use. So you can use the 7.0 series or the 7.2 series. So you can switch them on. Not all of them do that, but some of them do allow you to switch your PHP. Yeah. It's always a good idea to, to try to keep it up to date, but um, some some web hosts have uh, a schedule that they follow, and they wait until the release uh, has been out for a few months or a few days or whatever. Yeah. Just so they know that it's uh, okay. Over to Basic Joomla. Yeah, there's the video right there, Mr. Jamesy Town. I'll paste that in the uh... No, that. Hey Chuck, good to see you, man. Uh, okay, Mr. Jamesy Town, there is a link to the video on uh, not running your uh, Joomla site under PHP 7.0, and in that I show one of the most common methods for switching to a different version of uh, of of uh, PHP in your web hosting account if you have that available so check out that video uh that's one of the maintenance monday live stream from back in september the 10th chuck now that you're here just want to mention that tomorrow's uh, and I already announced this tomorrow's uh watch me work live stream we're going to do a collab and we're all going to look at content templater because you requested something on that so it's a chance for us all to uh, come back and in chat or in talk we'll uh, talk about how we use content templar how it works and some of the things that we like, and that will give you the overview that you were looking for. Yes, and appreciate you uh, appreciate you watching that later. That's cool. Stick around. That's the way to go. Yeah. So uh, notes. That would so that would be another handy way to uh, do notes. What are you looking forward to, Mary? The the, the Watch Me Work live stream tomorrow, which is great. Um. Yeah, so that would be another use for notes, and I oh, and I, I did that whole dumb thing too with my picture covering it. Uh, let's just do this here. I don't think anything will show. I'll just move this over here. Here we have. Here we have the notes here. Vinny gave me permission to use notes. Hey, does anyone know what the limit is for what the size that you can save in notes? Because I was thinking, so for instance, in this example, I've got, you know, Vinny gave me permission to use this. Um, but I could actually post the whole email address in there, or the whole email that you sent me. Phil, thanks for tuning in. I did not, um, I figured that you would be jet lagged. Uh, so Phil just got back from uh, Vegas and he was, he saw Penn and Teller. He saw... Um, uh, Piff the Magic Dragon and Tape Face. If those, if those of you who watch Tape America's Got Talent, Tape Face was uh, on there. Uh, anyway, so it looks like he went to Tape Face. So. Okay, yeah, so and Phil says he wants to do a Tuesday with a hack site sometime. That would be awesome. Um, and so, Phil, Phil, I knew that you were going to be jet lagged. And also, we still have that to, for a Watch Me Work live stream. 
uh, an overview of myjoomla.com. So yeah, we'll get you on here whenever uh, it suits you and works out for you. So, all right, and Mr. James E. Town can ask me, should system cache be on progressive cache or should it be on progressive caching? Having an issue where a site will randomly just go blank on the back end saying too many redirects. Oh, that's right. We Yeah, we talked about that too, didn't we? Um, I was going to say the next time that you have that problem, empty the cache, although you can't get into the back end when that happens. So this is something in, in, we were in the middle of talking about. I would... Uh, I, I guess if you think it's progressive caching, I would switch it back down to conservative caching and see if that happens. And if it still happens, maybe even just turn caching off and see if it still happens. Just try to slowly root things out. Unless anybody else reading this or listening to this has an idea for Mr. Jamesy Town. Mr. Jamesy Town, you want me to call you that every time? Are you, are, are you James? Maybe not. So what caching does is it takes a, if you think of it, takes a snapshot of, of a page or parts of a page. So, oh, it's Jamestown. Okay. Um, and so when, uh, let's say, uh, let me grab a couple of things here. All right. So let's say on a web page, I've got, uh, you call up a web page and it's got a, a header. So this is my glasses and it's got the body and which is the footer and that's my phone clip and then there's this uh, piece of paper that is the content and uh, let's suppose just in a ridiculous world if you were making um, uh, because it, my glasses are plastic and so is the case every time you called for a web page it would print uh, it would print plastic glasses for you and it would print the clip for you and it would also write out on the paper and it would do that every single time. Well, that would take a long time. So what caching does is says, well, you know, for the next hour, I'm just going to use this one set of glasses. Instead of making new ones and redrawing them all the time, I'll just use this. And the same with this footer. And so it makes it much faster for your page to be loaded because all that's being tackled is what's in the middle. You can even, and caching will even remember what's in the middle. So you basically, instead of drawing it and making it every time, Someone calls for that page, they get the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. And so you set a cache time um, for how long it will last. So you might say, I want the cache to last for an hour. So for the next hour, everybody will see the same page. Uh, and uh, then the cache refreshes and looks for something new. Now, if you haven't changed your page, they'll still see the same page. But if you've gone in and you've changed something on your content, that change won't be visible for another, till the end of that hour. Even like if you make the change halfway through, it would be half an hour in that case. And then um, uh, now uh, regular labs has a really cool extension called cache cleaner. And if you install that, every time you save an article or save a number of other places in your site, it will clean the cache and people will always see the latest version. Yeah, so if cache time is set to 15 minutes, would that be causing the issue? It, whatever the time is set to, it shouldn't be causing that issue. But it is possible. Yeah, see, that's yeah. Yours, is, yours is a tricky one because I've not, I've not seen the redirect thing come up because of caching. So something goofy is happening there. Um, uh, so yeah, the, the 15 minutes shouldn't make a difference. I have seen strange things where, um, the page, one page was set to cash for 15 minutes or one part and another page cash for an hour. And then something did get cleaned out cause the cash expired and wasn't recreated, but that's not, I don't think that's what's happening for you. The other thing too, uh, and I think that, uh, this is the, uh, this is possible. Let me, all right, let me just close off and uh, save this uh, note here. I'm going to go into uh, components, uh, regular labs extension manager, 
and I'm going to scroll down to where cache cleaner is and then I can click right on the system plugin and see I have some updates available there and then here we have so cache cleaner if you have cache cleaner installed I don't know if it's just the pro or not but uh, you can create a okay here it is front end secret URL let me just uh, zoom in on that a little bit and here's what I would suggest uh, and again I don't know if this is on the on the pro version or the free version but you can define a secret word that you can use in the front end URL to clean the cache from the front end. So for instance, uh, front end secret would be uh, Jamestown. All right. And then you would go to, when you're having your problem, you would go to http www.yourdomain.com index.php clean cache equals, and then it would be Jamestown. And if this is a caching problem that's creating your redirect problem, and if this URL will work during that problem, you can clean your cache from the front end of your site and then check and see if that fixes the back end problem. Because if it does clean the cache and everything's getting cleaned out and the problem remains, then you've ruled out that caching is the issue. So this is a neat little thing. Um, also, even though you can you can set cache to be emptied regularly, and I think that's a pro thing. I'd, uh, in fact, let's just uh, let's just go to regular labs and see uh, regularlabs.com, and we're going to go down here to cache cleaner, and we'll look at free versus pro. I'm gonna say the front secret is available in the free because I, I I don't. Oh, okay. So the free, uh, so Vinny confirms that the the URL at the for cleaning from the front end is in the free version. The automatic one is in the pro. Yeah, and the automatic one's in the pro. And I don't think that I'm giving away a secret here, uh, uh, but you could probably set up a cron job in control panel to run the front end URL, and you would could could schedule it that way. I hope Peter doesn't get upset if I mention that. Because <laughs> Peter's extensions are great. Go and buy them. Uh, look at some of the really cool things here, though, that you can see in the Pro feature. Because we're speaking about caching, something to look into is Jot Cache. I use that. That is the savior for me on speeding up my sites. And uh, the Pro version of Jot, uh, the Pro version of Cache Cleaner does empty out a bunch of other. In, including some of the CDNs that you might be using. So, okay, Ivor says could also be the .dot uh, ht access file. Yeah, I, Ivor, what do you think? Like, what do you guys think about what is causing this intermittent problem for him? I know that when I've gotten too many redirect problems uh, issued, that it has been. Uh, Often I've changed something in the HT access, but uh, to, for it to be intermittent, that's the that's the weird thing that uh, has me has me uh, wondering just what the heck is going on there. Yeah, thanks for posting that link, Vinny. Yeah, SEF. Yeah, uh, Jamestown, do you uh, use um, do you use any other caching things like Jot Cache or what are you uh, like? Do you use uh, perhaps SH four hundred four SEF? That's uh, something that manages URLs, or do you have uh, SEF turned on for you? Okay, it seems that when you're working on the back end, maybe after twenty to thirty minutes. Hi, oh, thank you very much. You just adjust the color a little bit. You know, on, uh, oh, that's not, how about that? Okay, oh, that's almost, that's almost lifelike. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Enable debug and look at the error log. 
Yeah, let's uh, just uh, let's just do that on my site here. Scroll Control O. Okay, so you just have basic site. Well, that's fine. Then the problem is uh, going to be just a basic one. Um, if we go to system, I don't want to do it on this site because uh, that will that will uh, bring up that will add code to it. Just a sec, I have to walk over to my CPU and press my UB key here to. Uh, log in to the back end of this site all right so system global configuration yeah because you said one thing uh uh thanks chuck yeah no my birthday was yesterday uh uh Ivor, one thing yeah look at the error log he's getting the i think he's getting the white screen of death he's getting like too many redirects so i don't think there's a page that's even coming up um, let's see, system, debug system, and I uh, see, I don't need, I have caching on conservative here. Save and close. Let's go to giveaways here. And we'll wait for this to stop spinning up in the top right corner. And of course, I should show you the screen here. Refresh this page. Okay, and at the bottom we have debug information. Yeah, but I, yeah, I just think though that the two, uh, Vinny, I see you posting that. It just seems to me that the too many redirects doesn't even bring up a page. So that's the... That's the challenge there. I don't have any, uh, there's no errors on this page. Oh, look at that, eight duplicates found. Da, 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 da. This is all Greek to me. And I studied Greek. There's a good question that I can't answer. Where is my error log? Yeah, well, he's at, yeah, his error log. It would be an administrator logs, is it not? Let me go over here. First of all, on this other screen, we go into hosting here. and bring up the count for that list accounts basic juma there we go and then i can bring this over to here all right go into file manager let me bring back the chat so i can see everyone with their helpful answers there in your server settings it says error reporting none yeah so um there are places where errors are reported though let's see you go to log uh, i'm just going to take a look here to, uh, error reporting. yeah so here we go let's check this out uh in i'm in the back end of i'm in the hosting for my basic joomla.com site i'm in the folder for that joomla install i go to administrator I go to logs, no. I go to, uh, I might not have moved this to the proper place yet. All right, I go to air.php in the logs folder and I let's just go edit and we'll read it. Um, unable to connect, I've got errors, uh, ld.failure, ld unable to connect to authentication these look like attempts to log into the site. 
Um, in fact, there's one there. So that's all the errors that we've got there. It looks like I have not followed my best practices here because I don't have logs inside of administrator, which is where they are now on basic things. So I actually have a, I think we covered that in the maintenance Monday. So I should, uh, I should fix that. Um, so here's another error log from September 1st. I don't know what that one is. Oh, here's a bunch of stuff. Oh, this is like, look, this goes back to November 23rd, 2016. I have not emptied this in a while. If I scroll down the bottom, yeah, it goes back to the last error here is um, from September 1st, 2018. So that's not helpful either. Uh, okay, so it just happened again on the front end. It says this: the page is not working. Redirect it too many times. Try clearing your cookies. Error too many redirects. Did you turn on error reporting on, or can you log into the back end of your site? To the admin? That would be something to, uh, to check out. I'm gonna delete this old, old, old error page that I just had. If you can get into the admin and change on error reporting, then go to the front end and refresh. Just, just, okay, so go to, uh, here, I'll show you on the site here. I need the back end of a site. Go to system, yeah, global configuration. Okay, that's a good point too. Uh, so here's something else that you could try. Ivor says uh, to rename your uh, .ht access file to htaccess.txt. You would do that in your file management. Uh, for your error reporting right now, I would just put development. That'll give you the most. Um, but... Um, yeah, if you go into the back end of your web hosting, it'll look something like this. You'll end up in your file, and you're going to look for this file here that's .htaccess. And uh, that's what Ivor's suggesting. That's a good suggestion to rename that htaccess.net, uh, .net, um, text, txt. In fact, you can see I have one down here probably from, oh, from when I updated Juma on the 29th. No, it was the 30th when that came out, so who knows why that's there. Yeah, so rename that and then go back and refresh your page and see if that fixes things. The other thing, too, is that if you want to send us to your page, just type it in chat. You won't be able to paste the URL, but type the... Um, Type the name of the, the URL and then leave a space or type dot dot and then whether it's a com or whatever and then we can go and have a look as well. Um, a few things, a few things to try there. Oh, it gave you three long errors at the top. Okay, those ones that say all three start with dep. Uh, Deprecate it. They might not be causing your problems, but underground mikz.com. Okay. Underground mikz.com. Underground mics. All right. Here we go. Um, methods with the same. Okay. So the. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think... Oh, and there's something that just popped up finally. There's That would be your site. Um, okay, yeah, Ivor, maybe in the, in the patch airlock there. All right, so uh, this came up. 
as you can see on my screen that page popped up so I'm guessing that that is your site um, but this came up after a long time it took a while so either it uh, either uh, you changing to if you did you make that change to the HT access file okay that's another that's another interesting thing too so what Hio just asked there is uh, do the errors also come with the normal protostar template uh, so okay. if you change to your uh, if you change the template just default template on your site to protostar you can look to see if you still get these errors I'm going to guess because these errors they're uh, reg uh, ACY reg ACY mailing EU cookie directive light Google Maps lib.php yt template.php yt render hmm. yeah there's a bunch of different ones different plugins there that are just throwing that now here this is this is a warning cannot modify header information headers already set started output started <laughs> should you just light a match um, maybe um yeah uh i don't know if you want to light a match everything else is working in there it's just some other things is all this stuff updated is this the current things i think um I think maybe you use an extension called Mighty Sites. And what is Mighty Sites? Do you have any uh, super? Oh, you need, uh, do you have any super? Um, super private stuff that might come up on your site if you sent me your login information if you emailed it to me um we could uh, i wouldn't and you don't mind me just logging in taking a look right now live that would be fine a bunch of us could look take a quick look at it i mean if it gets too bad when we will just light a match to it but um oh it allows you to have multiple joomla installs with one login uh, uh you mean under the same url possibly if that's the case that could be what's acting up it would be more like um, having um, you know using one site but uh, you could one Joomla login but you can uh, or one Joomla installation but you can have like two different sites oh, okay yeah and he was trying to okay you're trying to create a sub-site for different genres of music so as, so if I've got you right, do you is that an extension that allows you to use multiple Joomla installs? Mighty sites. It's not multiple Joomla installs, it's one Joomla install. Oh, okay. I, for him, what I would suggest instead of doing another Joomla, you know, multiple sites like that for uh for uh different genres of of uh, I would I would I would just use templates. Yeah, I use different use templates. Menu, you can select a different template yeah. based on a link. So if you click on rock music, it would be a different template. Yeah. Instead of going in and using a third party extension like this, use what Joomla is built in and I think I think just doing it um, with uh, with um, template um, with with changing your template yeah. um, would be the way to go. Uh, if your site was built on Gantry, you could build different, um, whole different layouts and stuff like that in Gantry for different uh, menus. Um, yeah. For too. Yeah. So, um, Jamesy Town, what the what um, Vinny was just saying there is that you can instead of having different 
URLs for different parts of your site and using an extension that runs multiple things like that, you can actually assign different templates to different folders. And I'll give you, I'll show you quick how to do that here. Let's go to basic Joomla. No, let's go to, uh, sure, why not? We'll wreck basic Joomla. <laughs> I can switch it back. Uh, so and that'd be a good example of using different things. So basically, I'm going to go to extensions and templates here on my site. And you'll see that I have hydrogen home, hydrogen default, protostar default, and protostar copy. I probably have copy from fooling around and so um, I'm gonna go into protostar default the uh, I'm gonna click the box next to protostar default and I'm going to go to the button up here in the top left which says duplicate uh, now now you see I have protostar default 2 so I'm gonna click on that and right now I'm just gonna give it a name just so it's easier to understand we'll call it Jamestown in fact let's just call it hip-hop because that's one of your examples. All right, so now we have a hip hop template. Now in Protostar, you don't have really too much to change um, like you do some other template systems, but let's click on advanced and here we can change the template template color. And let's just give it one of my favorite colors here, orange, as you can tell from the wall behind me. And the, back, the template color is orange and the background color, let's make it Oh, let's make it blue. And we can select whichever color. Of course, you could put in your hex there. And you can put in a different logo and a title description for this template. All right. So now here, the next tab is menu assignment. So let's go. Here's my main menu. That's just for a second on. Oh, let's not do giveaways because I try to get new people there. Let's go to Joomla tutorials. I'm going to assign by, by clicking just on Joomla tutorials in the main menu. I'm assigning this hip hop template to be the one that's used by those pages. So now when I save, I can uh, go up here and I'll preview uh, the site. So here's my main template, which probably is the gantry template that I have on there. But when I click on this link, Joomla tutorials, you're going to see now the color changes. This is the hip hop template that we just created. And uh, so basically by creating different versions of the template with color, with name, with logos and whatever, whatever template system you're using, you can now use your, uh, your domain, which is undergroundmics.com forward slash hip hop. And then you'll have a hip hop section and people will still be able to go on the hip hop and you can create a menu to click to it or people can just go to it directly. And you're and so instead of having hip hop dot underground mics dot com, you're using underground mics dot com for slash hip hop. But you avoid the whole hassle of having to use the extension that does multiple Joomla installs or sites by and, and with different URLs. And and so all you have to do here is just rinse, lather, repeat. Just keep making new templates and designing them. Let me just turn that off there and uh, I'll just give you a quick look because uh, I use Rocket Theme and they have Gantry. So just to show you um, the available themes here, first of all, uh, this and this is probably very similar to what the template system looks like that you're maybe using or not. Let's see. Click on configure. There we go. So here I can pick, here's the base outline for all of the templates, but I can have a different template for home, just for the home page only. And I can select one of these presets, or I can go down and I can manually override the basic setting, and I can just pick a different font color, all sorts of things. Not only that, but I can now go to the layout for this home, and I can uh, uh, discard those changes. I can now go through and I can look at this layout and I can change things. I can put, uh, I can drag uh, uh, a module instance and I can put it in this feature part or else I could move it down here if I want it in the footer. Now it's sharing that line with the footer. Anyways, you get to know these systems. Anything I do to this will only be, will only affect pages 
that have the home version of hydrogen assigned to it. Same thing, I can go to default now, that's a different one. I'll discard those changes. And now I can, even though, uh, and there's stuff going on here, this is inheriting from other, other parts of Gantry, but I can go and do overrides and change this template as I want. And however I, uh, whatever I make will only affect which menu items that that is assigned to. And here you see there's a slightly different menu thing. So you might want to do that instead, like Vinny said, and like Mary's pointed out, might be overkill for what you're trying to do because all of your, your site is all music um, and you've got different genres of music. I think probably the, the method that you're using is something if you had a website for selling cars and you also had a website for a carpet cleaning uh, company and you wanted to use the same installs correct me if i'm wrong you guys um, but that's uh that's sort of the dream out there that some people want to have uh one joomla install many many domains but only one thing to manage and it uh, so i wouldn't be surprised if that's what's causing you the problems if you stick with one to use that do try the ht access rename thing that i ever mentioned um or the cache thing that we talked about but i think that I think that this is probably a, a good way for you to go, especially since you've indicated that you're just, just starting out. So and this, so don't light a match, just uh, light a candle. Well, that's very poetic, don't you think? <laughs> don't light a match, light a candle. I mean, that's, again, that's something that you can control um, where you can have certain categories tied to certain groups. So each of the uh, different categories, you know, there's the rock group, there's the hip hop group, yeah. there's whatever. Yeah. Uh, that, that, now, Jamestown just put there, he's using SJ News 2 template, set it up that way so that contributors for each genre wouldn't get bogged down with a lot of blog categories, menu items, and that. And that's, yeah, and that's the concern for setting it up. So what you do is, you, uh, 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 Jamestown, what you do is you say, you create an account for me. I'm, as you all know, a very famous rapper here in Victoria. Um, especially at Christmas time, people love me to wrap presents for them. And so um, I log on, I um, create an article or I'm, blo I'm blogging. I can only save my articles to the um, wrapping forward slash Tim category. Now you have a menu link to that and you've assigned a certain template to it. So I don't even have to worry about the template and I don't have to worry about the categories. All I have to do is just assign it. Now, maybe you allow me to post the three categories. Then in that case, I just have to get that right, which one I put it in. But then uh, it's only available to that. And, and one way to do it is uh, when they log in, in their back end, in their, basically their dashboard, you can have links set up. So if they're a member of the rock group, they can see submit a rock article. Yeah. Member of the hip hop group, submit a hip hop article. Or yep. if they're a member of both groups, it would have both links there so they could select which one they want to select, uh, uh, you know, um, install. Yes. Or article. Yeah. And, uh, Jamesy town, what, uh, James town, what you are, um, what you're trying to do is not a simple site that you've, you've, you've jumped in past halfway towards the deep end, which is fine because you've got the right tool to do it. It's just good. It just takes a while to sort that out. Well, I wouldn't say it's not a simple site. I mean, cause it's got a very simple basic structure. Yeah. Yeah. Over complicated it. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm just going to log in here on another screen and we'll go see what's happening here. Because he's 
sent me a login administrator. And I need to find my mail there. Okay, so. In Jamestown, it's. I mean, especially since you're new to Joomla, um, it's 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 easy to just sit there and 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 keep yourself in that way, but we all started one way or the other. We all started uh, in, a, in a place where we didn't know as much as we did. Yeah. And you learn Joomla, you start to learn some of the things it does. As with any CMS out there, you start to learn some of the things it does, and then you'd be able to um, find different ways of doing it that um, are easier. Yeah. Yeah, and truth be told, we all spend hours staring at our screen trying to figure out why something won't work or how to do something. Still, so it's just part of it's just part of the deal. Yeah, and Chuck says he's been he's still a mess sometimes. Yeah, I I I think we all do. I tell you, I've been uh, I've been using Joomla since one, um, and I and as Chuck said, um, I still. Um, I, I like coming to this podcast. Uh, it's not really a podcast, but it, your live stream, um, because of uh, there's uh, you know things that I mean things that Mary or Webby Design mentioned. Uh, she gave me an idea that helped me do something that I have been trying to figure out how to do. Yeah. Um, everybody here has contributed to an idea um, that may help somebody else. In a project they're doing. Yeah. And uh, the other thing, too, is, is there's a very limited number of people dumb enough to go to live stream all of their mistakes, too. So if, yeah, we have Tim. <laughs> if everybody did, we'd break the Internet. Hey, uh, so I try. I used the login you gave me, and I'm getting this failed to start the session headers have already been sent by this plugin, REG acymailing.php at line 12. So I would think that, uh, hey, thanks, Jake. Uh, thanks, Chuck. I appreciate that uh, comment. You're welcome. I mean, I'm learning tons on the channel here too. Uh, when you're able to log into your site, I would unpublish this reg acymailing.php plugin because that one definitely is doing something there that's not allowing. These deprecated methods, they're just things that happen all the time and normally are not shown because you have error off. Uh, yeah, yeah, just what Ivor just said right there. Yeah, try disabling REGACY mailing. And if you cannot get into the back end of your site, there's a way that you can do it in your web hosting. Let me turn off my mail here because uh, we don't need to get those notifications anymore. Oh boy, I guess I have to find the right screen. Where the heck did I put that? <laughs> okay, I give up. Okay, you just disabled it. All right, so let's refresh it. Oh, see now, okay, now it's the uh, EU cookie directive light.php plugin. So, I always, yes, it is a plugin. I always get, I'm always encouraged when at least the error will change. That's progress. Yeah, so filter just for EU or for cookie and turn that one off and. And we'll see that. Forget too that you're on a bit of a delay there. Obviously there's something with sending headers and
Yes, that what? Yeah, sure. Uh, system. Yeah, I think that would be it. Hey, and now we're down to the Google Maps .lib .php. So, um, uh, well, that's trickier because that's not a plugin, but may, you must have a Google system. YT shortcodes includes. Huh. Wonder what that short codes thing is. Anyone recognize that? YouTube. Okay. I use uh, I use regular lab snippets. Okay. So some something that you're using to insert the maps there. I don't think that's the main problem, but it's the next thing. And Chuck's used it before. Okay. Um, yeah, so if, uh, Y2 short codes, obviously it's Google Maps. Oh, you just changed the template. Okay. Y2, isn't that you theme? Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, you just changed the template. Still get the errors at the front here, but that's okay. Oh, and then you've got error at, oh man, cache. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, it's getting exciting. Well, okay, so the, yes, yeah, something's taking a long time to uh, draw, as I would say, but it does show up for me. So the error in the back end, we're one step away from Yeah, so if you can turn off Google, the whatever it is that's YouTube, uh, are you using U-Theme? Is that what you said, Vinny? Well, usually YT is uh, what U-Theme uses. Yeah. Uh, but take a look for under, in your list of plugins, look for something that's called short codes or Google Maps. Turn those off and then we'll see. Here's another thing that we, if he's running uh, 7.0, that PHP version could conflict with, because um, it's not, uh, depending on what Joomla version he's using, which you can see, um, 7.0 might have some difficulty with yeah. um, the, the more recent versions of Joomla. Yes, YT short codes. Try that. Try disabling that. Disabled. All right. Ah, let's see what happens now. He said my new was you theme. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, there we are. Um Okay, so with those disabled, let's see what the front page looks like. The deprecated errors, they're nothing to really worry about. Cannot modify header information. That's still there. And that's a you another thing. Hmm. Components com community libraries core. Now com community, is that Joomopolis? No, that might be Joom Social. If you said uh, earlier that he was running Joom. Okay, he's got Joom Social, yeah. Okay. Um Mighty sites. Da, 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 da. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Jom social. So. Why you're running Jom social? I think he's uh, when he said earlier up in chat he's using it so that. Um, uh, let's see. Just looking back on the chat, why he's using Jom social. I think it's for the com it's for the community for the people he's going to have blogging. Um, SJ News to template. 
he is using. Okay, I'm going to look at the templates here that he has going here. He's using. Okay. Your default is okay. You've got Protostar right now, yeah. But uh, SJ News Two, okay. So yeah, he's got he's got uh, Job Social for the. It's a music social platform. Okay, so. Cannot modify header. I'm gonna search for that. Uh, search for that on uh, on the Googles here. Do you do what's a more recent one here? Can't log into admin section. Da, 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 da. Do do and for your kind. Of... No, that's not it. There's one from 2018 in the Kunina format. Oh, is there a way to delete everything but keep your users? Yes, there is. Um, first of all. The best thing to do, for, you want to make a backup of your site just in case, and you want to do that with Akiba Backup. So we have a tutorial for you on that. Um, James Town, you're going to spend a lot of time watching the videos on Basic Joomla. <laughs> which is all right, which is why they're there. Um, well, you've done backups before? Okay. Yeah, it's just Akiba is a really great way to do it. Uh, your users, I don't want to bring up your users because I don't want to show their email addresses here. So just to uh, manage these here. Yeah, you have uh, about uh, 80 users. I don't know that you need to delete everything from your site because... Um, Let me just uh, bring this back over here. I'm not sure if John Social is compatible with that. That might it might be a compatibility. It's... Yeah, it might be. I think that if you if you uh, how much uh, what do you have for content here in John Social? Let me move so I don't again I don't want to see address uh, not John Social K two items. Yeah, so you have. Yeah, about you have about ten articles on uh, K two, so that's not too that's not too bad to move over. I uh, yeah, uh, what I would say is, uh, move, r first before you delete, or were you saying, go ahead, Vinny. The least amount of extensions you can have, it's better. You know, the more you yeah. can use, the more the better. Yeah. So what I would say is, first of all, take your K2 items and recreate them as content. You don't need to restart your site doing that. Then, then you can uninstall K2 because then your content is over there. Um, your users are already there, so you can hang on to, you would just leave those in. If you go with the subfolder template assigned solution that, that we looked at earlier, then you can avoid the mighty sites thing that will simplify things for you uh, then you've got job social job social is one of the two great options for building a, a social site uh, for 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 your users and building a community so that's all good 
Um, and then everything else there looks like it's just pretty much, uh, you know, standard stuff that you're going to be using. So you don't need to raise the site, like just take the users over and start completely over because then you won't lose anything, any of your pro, any of the work that you've done on your template. You can head back there and you can make it a, you can set that as default and work away. And, uh, so it's, I think it's just backing up a little bit and then just, uh, taking a different, uh, a different path. Yeah, Mary said I just I didn't have chat up there, so um oh and Mary thinks that it's probably a, a problem with John's social mighty sites. Yeah, disable oh you can disable mighty sites if you agree that you can accomplish what you need other ways. Yeah, you can disable it. I think I don't know if disabling it um, uh, I, it, disabling it might break it too. Uninstalling it would probably be better, but you know. But by by all, but first of all, yeah, do put a keep a backup in there and get a backup and JXML. Chuck says, "What's JXML?" That I do not know. JXML. JSON. Oh, for saving users and articles. Okay, yeah, exporting, okay. Yeah. But I think your sites, I think your sites as it is, you just have a few, th just a few different directions to go and you're going to find that a lot easier. And then you're going to find not, once you find it easier, you're going to be encouraged by the progress that you start making too towards, towards your goals. That's good too. I know that, uh, I know sometimes we get to the point where we just want to, like you said, light a match or just start all over, just raise the whole thing. And um, I I know just another example, when I get struggling with things on a computer, there used to be when I got to the point where I thought, oh, I'm just going to reinstall Windows. <laughs> I knew that I was giving up. Um, and uh, although that can help things, that's a, that's a, that's a lot more effort than's required. My, did I, Vinny or any of you, do you, did I ever tell you a story about my brother-in-law bringing me, bringing his laptop and the expert in his northern town couldn't fix it? Um, he would be uh, on the internet and surfing, and then he'd lose internet access. And he said he had the, the computer expert in his town, northwest of Edmonton, uh, had looked at it and couldn't find it. And finally said to him, I think you're just going to have to reinstall Windows. So I thought, oh, okay, there's that. Okay. So let me look at it. So I sat down with his laptop and I plugged in the Ethernet cord. I'm on the, online. It's great. And then all of a sudden, the internet's not there. And then, oh, okay, not connected. So I moved just a little bit and it came back and went, aha. Uh -huh. So I, uh, uh, so I got out my hobby glasses and a dental pick that I used. I had it for model railroading. And I looked inside the Ethernet port, and inside one of the brass uh, wires had had crossed over the other one. Somehow it had got bumped or jammed or whatever, and that was the cause of him losing his internet. So I took the dental pick and I twinged it back into place. It sprang back into place, and he had no problem again. So I always remember. I tried. I always remember that as an example of. Instead of um, had they reinstalled Windows, they still would have had the same problem. And then I guess then they would have thought it was a hardware problem. And in that case, you'd say, "Hey, uh, it must be a hardware problem. You better get a new laptop." It was a hardware problem, but it was just a little, just a little fix. All right. Well, Jamestown, keep us up to date on that. Don't forget to remove my super admin access so you don't have too many floating around there. Or if you leave it, 
uh, create a better password than the one you gave me. <laughs> All right, everybody. So remember, tomorrow at uh, same same bat time, same bat channel, we will uh, do a collab and we'll look at um, content templater. Vinny's going to have some great examples to show us that he uses for I Love Old Time Radio. And um, and we will just take a look at, uh, at the basics there and learn a bunch of stuff together. I think that's all I got. Anybody else have anything? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Nope, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good too. Well, thanks for jumping in on the help here with Jamestown, everybody. And um, thanks, Chuck. Mary, you have a great day. And uh, Ivor, John, I think Phil's probably... Phil might be awake right now because he's on Las Vegas time. You never know. Rick. hi -o. Anybody who's lurking? Jamestown? Vinny? Everybody. That'll be it for now. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your Joomla sites. And God bless. <laughs>